Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size Talk. I'm very happy to have with me Adam and Satish, and they're going to talk about how to convert uh, PyTest into NF tests. And it's off to you. Ready? Get started. Oh, still a few people jumping in. Hello, right. So, yeah, we thought it'd be useful to give a little demonstration on how to convert an existing PyTest into an NF test, you know, so as you update your modules, you can migrate them to a new testing framework that we're, that we're starting to shift over to. Uh, maybe some extra hints and tips that you might like, um, and just a brief overview of how to do it. So yeah, PyTest um, workflow is been has been really good to be honest. It's been it's been able to test this massive monorepo that is NF core modules and some of the pipelines as well. Um, but it's indirect. It's using PyTest to call a subprocess, and then we have to write that sort of next low pipeline, and then we have to test the files that are coming out of this. So we're always a little bit out of the loop, you know, we're always waiting to to see what files are created and testing those files. Uh, NF test offers quite a lot of better advantages because of its integration. So, for example. Uh, for PyTest workflow, we have to write this custom main NF workflow, and that uses that basically wraps up the tool you want to test, um, and then it runs that workflow as the sort of default workflow. Um, whereas in NF test, we can have these sort of when and then statements, so we can really find control how, what exactly what you're doing within each test. Um, like I said, in PyTest, you can only really test files that are created and just look at the hash that's created. Whereas NF test supports these snapshots, which is really useful sort of automatic data structures that just you know check the the state of the file and then can ch check that it hasn't changed. Um, we can also because it's built in or an extension of Nextflow itself, we can actually do loads of different assertions. So we've only really scratched the surface here, where we've done sort of con file contains and and things like that. But there is additional plugins for things like faster files, and we can start to really dig into the granular nature of it. You know, we can test these variants appear in the pipeline and stuff like that. Um, and because it's extending Nextflow and Groovy, we could start to write our own, you know, code to extend this with plugins and extensions. And um, so I'm going to give a quick, oh, sorry. So firstly, uh, let's have a quick overview of a PyTest versus an NF test. Um, so yeah, at the top, we've got this tests main.nf, and that is a workflow. Like I said, it kind of wraps up a, a, a sim the, the module or the, sorry, the process or the workflow that you are testing um, with the PyTest. We had a configuration file. We have to add this just to export the files. Um, most of the time, that's all it does. But sometimes it adds some extra settings, you know, like an argument to a, to a command or something, um, or an additional setting that you might be interested in. Uh, and then we have, finally, we've got the test.yaml file itself. So this is the actual file that PyTest looks for, and it contains a shell script that it's going to run. It contains some tags that, it's gonna, that our continuous integration looks for that says what the test is testing. Um, and then it also contains the like assertion statements, which basically come down to, is this file created? Does the file have an MD5, or does it contain these strings? Um, when we go to NF test, the first thing we've done is we've actually moved where the tests are. So they used to be created in a slash tests slash modules NF core plus P. This is a fast P example. And now we're moving them into modules NF core slash fast P slash tests. And that just makes everything self contained and adds a little bit of um, ease of use when you're writing them um, because you're not having to do this massive relative imports where you go around the entire repository. Um, you'll see that when I demonstrate it. The actual test file is a main.nf test. Um, NF test is some really nice tooling to generate a lot of this for you. So it does most of this um, for you. And this will take the role of that test YAML file from PyTest workflow. The snap file I've just mentioned is the equivalent of the MD5 sums and the contents and checking that the output, um, the output of the, the process or workflow is the same. This um, can be quite complicated. You can actually represent, you know, things like the coming out of the process without actually ex writing a file or, or, you know, or values um, or the meta map and stuff like that, which isn't available in PyTest workflow. Uh, we've got a configuration file. This is actually optional. 
this could this generally you could just copy it straight from the PyTest workflow if you're if you need it. Um, but it's actually not that needed because you don't need that file writing um, uh, configuration. Finally, we've got a tag XAML. This is a lot simpler. This is just a lot simpler than the equivalent in PyTest workflow. It's just a single set of tags to match the folder. And basically what happens is our continuous integration picks up that tag XAML and checks if any files have changed in that module. And that means that for NF Core modules, when we update it, we don't have to test 500, 600 modules at a time. We can just test the one or two that have changed. All right, time to do a little live demo. Okay, so here I have uh, Callisto and this Callisto index. So it's a really simple test. We have one workflow here. This is the um, sorry tests met modules NF core Callisto index main NF file. Um, we have a single workflow and that is test Callisto index. And all that does is it takes one input file and puts it into the Callisto index process. Here's that relative import I was talking about. We have to go back six layers and then back all the way through. Uh, by putting it in a test folder, you'll see it's a lot simpler. Okay, so if you want to generate a new test, we can actually um, generate it using the simple command nf test generate process because we're testing a process, but that could be a workflow. nf test generate process, and then we point at the main.nf file um, that represents Callisto index. All right, um, so just looking there, it's created me a file here, and I can open it. I'm just going to move it to the side here so we can do a side by side. Um, we have here we've got the main.nf test. And we can see it's kind of got, you know, name, script, process. It's all fairly self-explanatory and the documentation can help lead you through any of these bits if you if you maybe not quite following what they do. Um, but the important bit is here, we've got this when statement that says what the test is going to be, and then then, which is the assertions at the end. Now, to lift over our PyTest workflow, what we need to do is essentially take this input and put it into the Callisto process. Um, just the index process. NF test will do the process for us, so we just need to specify the input. So we can literally copy that file and we can drop it here. Um, I'm just going to tidy up a bit um, there and then we can get rid of this because it's just a documentation. And that's basically the start of our workflow. Now there's a couple of more um, administrative things we need to do. So um, firstly, we've started to do a relative import. So what we do is just go back one folder and import the main NF file. Um, this just means that it's all just nice and self-contained. The other thing is we've started to put it in a test folder. Uh, so NF test won't do this for you by default. So I'll just have to do it now. So I'll just create tests, main NF test, drop it in now, move. Um, so this, this now means that it's import that it, it's in the test subfolder of Callisto index. Uh, tags. So we should add the tags. I've just copied them from another screen to make it easy. But basically, we have four tags for every tool, or three or four tags for every tool. Um, and they just tell the continuous integration what this test actually is. So it says, this is a module, it's an NF core module. This is what part of the Callisto suite. This is specifically Callisto index. In fact, that should be slash. Um, so we have now the four tags, and they'll be picked up by the um, by the this continuous integration. We've got one more thing we do. So by default, NF test as this assert statements one by one. Um, it will go through each of those and test them. So it'll test this top one first, and then test the second one. We've started to move over to using this other thing they provide called um, assert all, which basically does all of them at once. And if any of them fail, it will raise an error. Um, this just helps catch any errors that you've got. Um, there are use cases for using assert on its own, but you know, for, in general, this is what we plan to do. So I think it's cropped off the edge there, but you can see assert all, assert process success, assert snapshot matches. And this is the snapshot is what we're gonna be creating to match our file. Okay, so now we've got, we actually don't need the params law, we can actually get rid of that one because there's no parameters to set. Um, all right, so now we can um, test it. So I am just doing nf test test, 
Uh, I'm pointing at the modules, but you could use a tag to do that just as well. I'm using Docker profile um, because I've got it ready on my machine. And then we've got a clean snapshot, but there's a couple of snapshot options for like ref refreshing the snapshot or creating a new one. Hit go. Should go. Okay, and it's finished. Um, so here we can see the snapshot has been created. Uh, this is a JSON. It's kind of not human readable exactly, but you can certainly um, check it. One thing I've been starting to do is actually you can go and you can get the hash. So this is the old PyTest workflow file, and we can see the MD5 sum of the output it's created. And you can see it's two. Da, 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 da. We can actually find that in here, and we can see that the hash matches. So it says that the test hasn't changed anything, and we can pretty much do a direct translation from PyTest workflow to test. And that's pretty much it. So now we just need to you know add. Add our tools, and we've added the um, we've started building our thing. Oh, I've forgotten the tags. So we need to add one more thing, which is the tags file. So tags.yaml. And this is really before we build um build NFCore tooling, which we hope to do pretty soon. So we'll do a lot of this for you. Um, but yeah, we're gonna add tag. And the tag is basically the name of the module, which matches who? this tag here. Um and then it is the path to the module with two globs to say any file within that folder is changed. So we can now that, and we're ready to go. Um, and if you can always just run that test again, make sure that it works. And then there we go, green tick. So I'm going to switch over to Satish now, who's going to show you how to do a daisy chain module. All right. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. OK. Um, you are able to see my desktop, right? My VS Code? Great. Yeah. OK. Uh, so what, we have, uh, what Adam has shown us is an example of what we can call as a simple module that is a process on its own. It doesn't require any other processes uh, for its execution. Uh, Callisto uh, has another uh, tool within its suit. Uh, it's called Callisto Quant. And this is the PyTest uh, workflow of Callisto Quant. You can see uh, it actually needs uh, two processes, the Callisto index for which we just created the test, and then the Callisto Quant uh, process itself. So uh, if you look at this test file, um, it has basically actually two tests, one for single end and one for paired end. Uh, and if you see any one of the workflow itself, uh, within the workflow first, it's running the Callisto quant uh, process, uh, and then uh, the Callisto, uh, sorry, first running the Callisto index process, and then uh, running the Callisto quant process, uh, which basically takes one of the inputs uh, from the Callisto index uh, process. So uh, this is in PyTest. So how do we do this in NFTest? Uh, NFTest provides a setup method. So uh, I'll just quickly get started with uh, porting it over. Uh, so first I'm gonna generate uh, the uh, uh, NFTest file for uh, Callisto Quant using the generate process uh, command from NFTest. So this kind of like gives you a boilerplate uh, test module. Uh, I have already created my uh, test folder within the quant, uh, Callisto quant directory. Uh, so I'm just going to first move my uh, uh, test file into the test folder. And once you have that there, um, so we'll start with the changes right away. First is replace uh, the absolute paths with uh, uh, relative paths. I'm going to add the modules, uh, the tags. So as uh, Adam was telling about how uh, we're going to add different tags. So the tag modules and tag modules NF core, we are adding uh, them by default to all NF core modules. Then come in the name of uh, the suite of tools. And then we can add uh, a specific tag for this particular uh, process itself, which is Callisto slash quant. All right, so I'm done with my um, 
adding of tags, uh, removing the params block. We don't need, uh, because we don't need to set any params here. Um, and just cleaning this up. Uh, first, let's create a, a test for a single end. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, change, uh, you can add a name to a test. So you can provide this as uh, a, a name for the test. So this process uh, for this test, we are, we'll just call it single end. And now going back to the PyTest, uh, you'll see that uh, the Callisto Quant process actually takes four inputs. So uh, it takes input of uh, the data itself, and then it takes uh, index and uh, two more uh, additional inputs. So what we'll, and uh, the way inputs are provided in NF test is through positional inputs. So what we'll do is we'll create uh, additional uh, input files and give them their positional names, right? But this is for the Callisto quant process. So the when block and then block. But remember, we first need to run Callisto index process before the Callisto quant process. So uh, the way that is done in NF test is by using uh, the setup method uh, where you can specify uh, to run a particular process before the primary uh, when block itself. So the syntax for this is within the setup block, you can uh, specify which what is the name of the process that needs to be done. So in this case, Callisto index, and you open this run block itself, and now uh, provide the path to the Callisto index process. So which will be one folder up. So uh, index main.nf, and within uh, and beneath that, we provide uh, the process block uh, to run uh, this particular uh, Callisto index process. So uh, as if you remember from uh, Adam's demo, uh, Callisto index just takes one input. Uh, so uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and if you see um, it's taking it uh, in this particular uh, uh, PyTest workflow, you'll see uh, uh, this is the faster file uh, of SARS-CoV-2 genome that is being indexed. Uh, so you will need to provide that uh, in the uh, input. So we'll quickly, I'm just gonna uh, get this from my previous one, right. All right, so what we have here is uh, basically the setup method uh, that is running the Callisto index process. This is the path uh, to the index process and within the process block, you're providing the input uh, to need that is needed to run the Callisto index process. Uh, once we have that, now uh, going back to uh, the uh, PyTest workflow, uh, so looking, uh, the first input for Callisto quant uh, is the input block here. So I'm just going to copy this and uh, provide that as the first uh, positional input. Tidy it up a bit. Uh, the second uh, input is Callisto index out. Uh, and, um, and it's basically taking the uh, index of uh, the Callisto index process. So to provide that here, um, but if you quickly check, uh, it's actually, there, there's a mistake there. It's actually called index, not IDX. Uh, now the uh, index process, uh, the index output channel, uh, if you look at the output, it's actually a tuple containing the meta and the index, uh, but for providing uh, the input to the quant process, we actually just need to provide uh, only the index and not the meta. So we need to map uh, this process again. So we'll uh, provide index, meta, index, and just map out, uh, take out the meta and just have within uh, only the index within the process. And uh, these uh, uh, will be provided blank, as you can see, uh, as compared to uh, the PyTest workflow. So Okay, so we have all our inputs now. Um, and as Adam was suggesting, we are wrapping all our assertions within uh, the, uh, uh, the assert all block. So that would be assert all. 
And there we go. Um, right. Right. So we are getting there almost. So first we have uh, our setup block uh, here that runs the Callisto index process. And then uh, in the primary when block, we have the inputs that are needed for the Callisto quant process. Uh, and then we finally have our assertions. Uh, but uh, if you look at uh, the, uh, the uh, Callisto quant uh, process, it also has an XLOOK config. So uh, the Callisto index process did not need any additional config, uh, but the Callisto quant process needs uh, the, these uh, external uh, parameters to be set. So what we'll do is we'll just copy this next flow config and put it uh, in the test folder right next to uh, the uh, the main dot nf dot test. So we'll I'll just paste it into this folder, uh, and once I have it uh, within uh, the test folder, uh, you can specify the config that needs to be applied uh, um, at the top of the test file. So in this case, I'm just providing it nextflow.config, right? So it's got its nextflow.config as well. So uh, we are uh, pretty much there. So if we run this process now, uh, you can always refer to uh, an, uh, a, a test uh, or you can run a test by its tag. So in this case, uh, you can use the dash dash tag, uh, Callisto uh, font and run it using profile Docker. And you can see it prints out the test name, uh, single end, and notice this hash uh, that is right next to the test name. Uh, it's quite similar to uh, Nextflow, where it uh, each uh, test is run within its own directory. And uh, this particular uh, uh, tests are run within a dot nf test folder that is automatically created in the uh, in the parent directory. Uh, and you can check this directory uh, for the uh, the work and the output of a particular test. So in this case, you can see we created one snapshot called single end. Uh, so now let's quickly go over and verify the snapshot. So that is just basically run the test again. Uh, and this is gonna fail because I have, <laughs> we have already tested this. Uh, and this is probably gonna fail uh, because the output uh, has uh, some inconsistent uh, files that generate inconsistent snapshots. So uh, what do we mean by that? Let's, uh, to understand that, let's have a quick look uh, at the uh, Callisto quant process itself. So if you look at the Callisto quant process, uh, you'll see that uh, it is emitting five different channels. Um, so here, as I said, uh, my snap, my test has failed because uh, the snapshots don't match. And if you see, it is these particular uh, 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 NFTs now gives you a very uh, diff, a very visual way of diffing the snapshot. So you can see exactly which. This is the previous snapshot uh, to the left and to the right is the one that's being generated right now. And you can see uh, there are some files that don't have uh, matching MD5s. And this is uh, a, a very probable case that you'll probably see uh, if a file contains uh, either timestamps or paths, run info that is particularly uh, uh, about that particular run. So they won't be generated, it'll be generating a different snapshot. So in, in those cases, the snapshots won't match. So uh, just looking at the uh, the process itself, uh, you'll see that uh, the quant process is emitting five different channels, abundance, HD5, run info, log, and versions. So in these, uh, the, H uh, the abundance HD5 uh, and the run info, are particularly the files that don't generate a consistent snapshot because they change upon every run. Uh, so in these cases, uh, it's a decision to be made of, uh, of whether uh, to uh, what to include within the snapshot. In this case, because the abundance file uh, is primarily the truth file, uh, the main output of the quant process, um, we can check only for this process and include only that in the snapshot. Um, so uh, in most cases that should work. Uh, in cases when you cannot generate a consistent snapshot of your main truth output file, uh, there are other uh, ways of checking uh, for 
uh, uh, contents of the file, particular contents within a file and not the entire file so that uh, you can generate a consistent snapshot. So what we are gonna know, do now is uh, change uh, our uh, process. Uh, we'll specify exactly, uh, instead of capturing all the output channels with, by, with process.out, we'll actually now specify the individual uh, uh, output channels uh, to capture. So what we'll do is we'll just take, uh, we'll create some more uh, assertion lines, And uh, we'll specify only process.out.abundance. And within uh, this match dot match uh, is the method that is actually comparing uh, a previous snapshot to the current snapshot. And just like uh, we can have named keywords for emit, uh, you can also provide uh, named uh, 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 identifiers for uh, items within your snapshot. So you can name that abundance um, because we know that the abundance HD5 and run info do not generate consistent snapshots. We'll not include those in the snapshot. Uh, next, we'll include the log, give that a name, and then the versions. Process out our versions and match that to the versions, right? So uh, now, uh, because the snapshot has already been generated, uh, we'll use the update snapshot uh, command to uh, re-record any uh, new snapshots that are uh, that have changed within the test file. So you can see that it gives you a warning that every snapshot that fails during this test is re-recorded. Uh, but I also want to uh, point out uh, another thing is when you update a snapshot, uh, the previous uh, uh, entries within the snapshot are not deleted. So this is what you can see uh, is shown in this summary here, where it says it has created three new uh, entries within the snapshot, uh, abundance, log, and versions uh, for what we have specified uh, as the named identifiers. But there's one obsolete as well because it's no longer present uh, within the snapshot now. So NFTest provides another command to clean any uh, obsolete snapshots. So the uh, the command here is called clean snapshot. And what this does is it'll remove any obsolete uh, entries within the snapshot that are no longer present within the test file. So if you uh, let's take a look at uh, the uh, the snapshot file itself. So here you can see uh, uh, entries from the previous and the current uh, updated version of the test that we have. Uh, but now that we have run it uh, with uh, clean snapshot, it's now only uh, has the entries for abundance log and version. So that's what you see uh, within the snapshot. Great. Uh, so now uh, we have created a test for single end. Uh, so, but if you notice uh, that the Callisto quant process also has uh, the, the actual PyTest module ha also has uh, an additional test for paired end data. So if we are to uh, create another uh, test, uh, what you can do is you can just, you can have multiple tests within the same test uh, file. Uh, so you can, uh, copy and paste uh, this within uh, the same test file and uh, provide uh, different inputs. Uh, but looking at uh, the uh, the test for single end and paired end, both require the same setup of Callisto index. So when a setup, uh, what we have done here is we have provided setup within that particular uh, uh, test scope. But if you wanted to provide a common setup, a global uh, setup method for multiple tests within your file, you can move the setup block uh, from within any particular test scope uh, and uh, put it above, uh, be, uh, beyond the any of the test scopes. So that makes it global uh, and it will make available the, the output of that particular process uh, to any particular test, uh, any number of tests that you might have within your file. So now that I have moved the setup block outside uh, of the single end test scope, 
I'm going to copy uh, the uh, the test block for single end. Uh, chain call this paired end and uh, provide the input. Oh, actually, I think I've given uh, paired end data for the single end. So uh, I'll actually uh, change that here. My bad. Uh, so if it's a single end, the input needs to be just one fast queue. There we go. So uh, now I have uh, the global setup method that will provide the Callisto index uh, for all the different tests that are within the particular test suit. Uh, we have a test for single end providing the input here. Uh, and then we have a test for uh, paired end uh, providing the actual inputs. Uh, but notice uh, it might be just one test file, but uh, the snapshot that is created, the end there's only one snapshot for each test file. So if we have the same identifiers for uh, um, your entries within the snapshot, they might collide. So what you need to do is provide uh, some more uh, identification or delineation between exactly the, uh, the test uh, entries within the snapshot. So for this is single end. So uh, I'm going to change add this identifier of single end uh, to uh, these identifiers for the snapshot. And for the paired end, uh, we'll add uh, paired end uh, identifiers. And there we go. All right. So that's uh, should be ready. Uh, but since I have changed the inputs, I'm going to update the snapshot. The single end has passed and it's running pattern now. Uh, but because we have changed uh, the names of the identifiers for uh, within the snapshot, uh, we now have some obsolete uh, uh, entries within the snapshot. So you can run the clean snapshot uh, command to remove those uh, obsolete entries within the snapshot and make sure you have only the, uh, uh, the entries that are in the current test file. So uh, just as a recap, uh, you can have a setup method that's global and have multiple tests within any single test file. If you're having multiple tests, make sure uh, the snapshot identifiers are unique enough so that they don't clash within uh, the snapshot uh, file. And uh, since we have, and now I have run these both uh, for Callisto Quant, uh, one advantage uh, of, providing these multiple tags. Now I can run uh, all the tests for Callisto, including index, by just providing the tag Callisto. So when I do that, it's going to find all the test files that contain the tag Callisto. And in this case, first you'll see it'll find the Callisto uh, index process. Hopefully, there we go. And it's running first the Callisto index process. And then uh, it will find the entries for Callisto Quant process and verify, uh, run the tests and verify if the snapshots match. So in this case, you can see it's first running single end again. And voila. So we have now with one command, we have done all the tests for Callisto, including index and quant. Uh, as a final step, um, add the tags that uh, uh, um, Adam just mentioned about. Uh, these are for the GitHub uh, continuous integration to pick these uh, tests up. Uh, and once you have, uh, you can just comment your changes. Uh, so it will basically be the uh, test folder uh, containing everything that you have added. So finally, within my test folder, I have the main.nf.test, 
I have uh, the snapshot for the test. I have a Nextflow config uh, uh, because it's required only for this quant process. And then I have the tag start level. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, so uh, that was an example of uh, uh, running simple modules, uh, creating, uh, uh, converting PyTest modules for a simple module, uh, and also a chain module uh, uh, using the setup method. Uh, so we have uh, started uh, this migration during the last hackathon. So we have some more examples uh, with NFTest, uh, such as Abrogate, uh, that has examples of both Simple and Unchained, FastQC and HiSat2. These are just examples. There are a lot, a lot more modules have been uh, uh, updated with NFTest. So uh, if you go into any modules repo, uh, and if there's a test folder, uh, that means it all it has uh, uh, NFTest within it. If it doesn't, uh, please consider creating uh, tests for those. So with this, we actually would like to invite uh, everyone who has previously contributed a, mod a DSL2 module to NFCore modules. Uh, kindly check uh, the module repo uh, that you have submitted. Uh, if it already has NFTest, verify if the uh, the assertions there uh, are actually verifying the truth of the module itself. Uh, if not, consider creating one. And if uh, for this, we have added recently uh, a step-by-step -step of uh, create of all the steps that Adam and I have just shown you uh, for simple unchained and chained modules. Uh, this is currently on the NF code log. So it's a two modules uh, 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 page. So you can find step-by-step -step instructions there. So with that, thank you so much. Uh, reach us out on NFCore, uh, NFTest channel. Uh, we'll be back with another bite size uh, with NFTest for workflows uh, and pipeline level. Thank you so much. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. This was very informative and I'm sure it will help a lot of people. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? I've dropped the pull request in the chat. That is actually the code we were doing. So you should, all those changes there, you can go and look at them if you want. Awesome. Uh, it seems that you answered all the questions. Actually, my question you answered at the end. So <laughs> I'll drop the, it's uh, great to have the box. Well. Sorry? I've dropped the documentation link there as well so everyone can yes. see it. Perfect. Then uh, I would like to thank you both again. Uh, I would like to thank the audience for listening in and the John Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite sized talks. And I hope to see you all next week. Bye bye. Bye.